Today's presentation, fun, interactive, and hybrid teaching. It is one minute past four o'clock, and you're with uh, the entire gang from the Récit Domaine des Langues ESL. Uh, my name is Martin Tremblay, but I will introduce the rest of the team shortly. Let me just remind uh, the, all of you what our main goals were with all of these afternoon meetings that we have on a, what on a weekly basis. We wanted to provide teachers uh, some support in the distance teaching context, and we will be successful if you know how to assess and prioritize your needs. If you can find and use the available resources, we're going to show you. Uh, and if you can use technology to adapt, modify, but especially to redefine your lessons to suit your distance teaching needs. And today we are going to show you easy ways to make your course interactive and hybrid because that's one of the secrets is sometimes a lot of teachers uh, who have to do like uh, part of it at, at home and part of it uh, in class, they think they, they need to planning. But if we try to do everything in a hybrid way to have everything accessible everywhere all the time, then uh, it could make things easier as one plan to rule them all, just like Lord of the Rings. So uh, as I said, we can uh, switch the slide. Uh, I am here this afternoon with my great colleagues from Récit d'Amène des Langues. Uh, we have Diane. <laughs> we, <laughs> okay, we have uh, Nadia Larando and Sandra Lane. And uh, everybody's going to speak except for uh, Sandra. I think you're the voice of reason today this afternoon, right? Excellent. But she will be chatting with you if you uh, are writing in the chat. She will be uh, writing to you with pleasure. Okay, and as you probably know, the Rissi, uh, we, are, we are a network of resource people all across the province. We are the Service National, but you do have regional Rissi and local Rissi people who can also help you uh, with tons of things. Uh, you have everything written down there. Um, can we go to the next one? Yes, our mandate, of course, is to produce, share, promote useful resources to integrate technology and digital uh, resources um, for ESL. That's our mandate. We support consultants, uh, teachers, and professionals in the different school boards, and we offer various types of training sessions, online face-to-face -face workshops. Today, we're going to show you a lot of different tools and we'll have some models. Some of the things that we'll show you, you can already use depending on the, your context and your lessons. Um, and that's it, we're super excited to, to show you this. Uh, and with this, I think I'm going to let my colleague Diane uh, take the mic. You'll see that uh, on your screens, there is a an image. If you click on the hand, it'll give you access to the, the web page, the Genially. So I'll go ahead and do the exact same thing here. OK, so you will always have you'll have this uh, this PowerPoint that uh, the, the presentation rather that we have shared. And so you'll always have access to the Genially because it is in the presentation that we have. So I'm going to start today by talking about Quizlet. I don't know if uh, a lot of you have used Quizlet already, if it's something that you use often or what you use it for. Um, and being as right now I'm staring pretty much at a blank screen, uh, I'm, I don't have hands that I can see because there's uh, not a lot of people. So maybe in the chat, if you could put a, a thumbs up for if you use Quizlet already in class, that'll give me an idea of uh, how many people do. Um, so while you're uh, thinking about that and, and putting your thumbs up or raising your hands in the chat, I'll uh, go ahead and tell you a little bit about it. So uh, Quizlet is basically a self-paced free, my favorite price, um, web tool that we can use with our students for uh, vocabulary acquisition, but it's also it's, it's not just for vocabulary. There's other things that we can do with it. Um, actually, lots of things that we can do with it. We create study sets and um, we send the study sets to our students um, before you start a lesson, say on, uh, oh, I don't know, random example, the Christmas Carol, um, and the, the kids can look and learn about the words before um, they start using the, the, the words in class. So I'm going to show you just briefly um, my uh, Quizlet. Okay, well, you can see my, my first word there. 
so this is my uh, in, um, environment. So I created just a little folder for today. So there are, um, I have three that are in here. These are the two here, the universal themes and the classroom objects that you'll see. If you click on the, um, the Genially, then you'll have access to um, these, um, these two um, sets already. But the one I was to show you today was the Christmas Carol. So Christmas Carol, because it's Christmas and it's one of my favorite Christmas books. Um, there are here we see on the left hand side there in the study set, you can see there are different ways to, to, to have your students study the words. So in the flashcard, you would just have the word and if they click on the word, they have the definition um, in the learn mode um, they see the definition or a picture because a lot of times with elementary students we don't have a big long definition there is a picture instead of the definition so there'll be a short word it could be even a color you know the, um, so you'd have the word spelt out on the other side you'd have the color um, and the students at that point would just match the words together um, we can have them write the word um, spell the word after having heard it so they would hear the word and then spell it and test mode is basically all of these things together. The fun thing about it, though, is that you can do things with your students live. But before we get to that part, what I wanted to show you was how easy it was to use. OK, so here I made um, a set already, but I need to, uh, let's say, go add some more. Um, some more words to this. Um, uh, to the set, my class set that is, is already there. So what I would do is I would go in to the set that exists and what the fun part about it is too is that you can go and look at the, the, the study sets that have been made by other teachers uh, and just take their study set and make it your own. You can modify the images, you can modify the words, you can modify the definitions, you can add words, take away words, so you're not starting from zero. Uh, a lot of teachers already have their vocabulary lists on paper uh, in a Word document, say. Um, so the fun thing is that you, what you could do is import from Word. So if I look here on my Christmas Carol, here's um, I have um, vocabulary words that I've already pre-selected that I could just import and dump them here, and it would um, it would then create new. Uh, new cards for my my students. So I'm going to cancel that because I've already got the the words in there that I would like. OK, but um, something that's really fun down um, at the bottom, let's say if we wanted to add a card and let's say because I'm working with the Christmas Carol, I'm going to add um, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. So I'm going to pick him down here. And you'll see that they already have definitions there for me to choose from. I don't even have to pick, uh, to to make one up on my own. So I could pick this one, and I could also choose an image. So I could ch choose whichever image that I liked, and now I'm done. Okay. So it's a really really super fun way for our kids to uh, study the vocabulary on their own. They can do it um, uh, at at school, or they can do it um, on their own time. Um, so it's uh, it's super fun. So what I want to do really quick is play a game. So if we go into the live. OK, so I'm going to pick individual because we are online. So we have a winner. Yay! So of course, the first time, like Nadia mentioned, the first time that we do this, it takes a, a while, but uh, students get used to it. So, OK, so I'm just going to stop uh, sharing that for, for just a sec. So as you can see, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's pretty fast and, and kind of competitive. Um, 
but uh, students can also learn on their own. They don't have to be playing a game. They could have the study sets and just look, look at the vocabulary words on their own uh, with the definitions um, on their own. I think I'm going to get a bonus for every time I say on your own. <laughs> so that's it. That's uh, um, Quizlet. It's uh, super fun and um, it's one, one way to, to have uh, kids learn vocabulary and there, there's other things that can be done with it uh, as well um, but uh, vocabulary was one of the uh, first reasons that uh, it was created by the creator so that's it so i'm going to pass the puck now uh, on to nadia who's going to present something else that's uh also super fun so someone is asking thank you diane uh, your first time with us today, with us uh, present presenting. Thank you, Diane. Um, now for the next one that we're showing you, uh, it's the one that you see on the Geniali that Diane is presenting. It's the one that online quizzes anytime, anywhere. So it might be one that you've already seen and that you've already done, but there there are some changes. And uh, there are some new functions that you will find very interesting. So I'll be sharing you uh, uh, about, I will showing you this tool, but also the new features of this tool. So, uh, so I will share my screen and show you quizzes. So quizzes uh, is a, an online tool to do quizzes. Uh, the name says it, but the name now is a bit obsolete because uh, you can do other things with it. So um, what's very important to understand is that like in Quizlet, uh, a great feature is that it's very, very easy to take someone else's quiz and transform it into your own, uh, which I did for this one that you'll be seeing today. So uh, what you do is you take it in and put it in your account and it appears in your library here. So that's great, fantastic then you can just reuse it and modify it the same way that Diane showed you. It's very similar. Uh, you edit it, you modify the questions, the answers, and uh, you sh start a quiz with it. One thing, and then you actually get reports, You and you can put organize everything into classes which makes it easy because we know that we have like 14 groups and uh, you know different levels so it's a uh, uh, great to have uh, everything organized into classes you can there's also google integration so it's very easy to create your classes um uh, one thing that i would like you to okay so the next thing uh we've always seen that like many of you have seen this tool i'm sure and the way that you've seen it is that you, you have the question that appears and then you choose one answer. But that's not all you can do now. So what you can do now is also, uh, well, you can do quizzes, but when you do quizzes, um, uh, okay, geography uh, here, you create, but you have all those choices now. You have multiple choice, which is what we ha had already. We have uh, the checkbox option, fill in the blank, a poll now, and then open-ended, which was something that teachers were, were asking for a lot. And you can also create a lesson. So in create a lesson, I'm going to exit this. Uh, so you can choose to create a quiz or a lesson, which is the new feature for um, video conferences because you can use them on online. Um, and what it does is that it creates like, like a slide presentation or a, a PowerPoint or something like this, but you can control how it's presented. It could be presented at uh, your at teacher's pace or student pace. And um, so, so you, it's very easy to modify and uh, you can uh, make changes uh, very easily, okay? And then once you publish it, you decide how you want to share it. Uh, you add slides and that's you can add your different types of questions on every slide. And on the right, you it tells you it's very guided. You know, it tells you what you should do next. So it's very easy to use. So that is a new function of uh, uh, quizzes that is very practical. And by the way, I'm mentioning this because 
many of the tools that you're using in class already have new features. So it's, it's, you could either f go find on social media or find on Facebook groups related to each tool. You know, if you really, really like quizzes, join the group about quizzes because you get to learn about what the new features are and they work hard for teachers, those companies. So, uh, so by being uh, aware of what's new, you get all the, uh, the new details. I'll show you uh, just the quiz of quizzes. Uh, in the Genially that uh, you saw, you know, the presentation with all the different uh, uh, tools, there is one for quizzes and the one for quizzes has an example, one example for elementary, which is this one and Christmas vocabulary primary. And when you open it up, it opens up in your account. When you open your account, uh, it opens up and you can make a copy and keep it for yourself. Um, so, but the one that we're going to be seeing is the one for secondary. So what I'm going to do is I'm showing you how I am starting a live quiz. So I will start the live quiz and I will use it. You could decide to do it instructor paste that way, the teacher in class or at home, you know, depending on what your needs uh, are, you can uh, do it instructor paste and, you know, show it on the, the, the whiteboard or uh, let the, you know, do it in a remote uh, distance teaching session. And uh, you, but you, you decide when the questions change. Uh, but we're going today to start with the classic one. And we're going to, uh, you can decide to use memes or not. I like memes, so we're going to use them. So what I would like you to do is now, you will go in here, I will uh, copy the link and put it in the presentation but i like what i'm doing now is i'm sh sharing the present the quiz straight in the um in the chat so that you can do that with your teacher your students as well you share it there so it's easy for them to just click and join so i already see some names so you can decide to change it to join just like that uh, with the code or i see i hear pops people coming in Okay, we're going to wait a few, uh, well, just a minute. We have uh, quite a few appearing now. Okay, lizards, microphones, uh, you can play with the vocabulary. There's a, what is that? Oh, there's a, a monster, a dog, uh, a football with eyes, a spider. Okay, you don't get to choose that. That's, oh, there's a unicorn. Miss Morgana is... A unicorn I'm sure she's very happy about that so I am starting the game now so I don't know if you can hear the sound but there is a sound so I'm going to stop it here just because I want to continue uh, with the other uh, activities and uh, of course you have the link in the presentation uh, the genial Lee, and you can continue using it but one little thing I'd like to show you when you finish your quiz, you can uh, look at the answers that you, you wrote and check the answers and the ones that you got incorrect. And if I want as a teacher, what I can do is go back on the, uh, the answers and check, oh, this one was not uh, well answered here. So maybe we should go back on this one here, right? So because I know that this one uh, oh, this one also, uh, also maybe I should go back on the answer. So as a teacher, I can go back and uh, on the questions that were not answered correctly by many people. And uh, we do have a winner, Sylvie P. I had to say it, I'm sorry. Sylvie P, good job. And we have a uh, top three, Louis Xavier and Lizzie. Okay, let's go back to um, the presentation. I think, uh, I think that's it for my part. Unless there's questions, uh, maybe I'll start sharing my screen. Or it, Nadia, did you mention yeah. that um, it's possible also to send it as a homework? Yes, it is, but I didn't, I'm didn't. i not sure I made it clear. So yeah. yes, you can send it as a homework. When you go in the Genia Lee, uh, you have a Quizlet on the le top left, Edpuzzle, Genia Lee for the two different re uh, ways that Martin showed you. And then you have the quizzes here example, but you also have here in the middle uh, 
an explanation of this genially, but I forgot to mention how it's structured the same way. So discover quizzes, you get a, a, a video presentation video, you have suggestions of activities, a lot of different ideas um, at home, at school, and then at home. So just wanted to go back on that to make sure that you got the idea that for all, and then also you have the models in the middle, the one for elementary and the one for secondary. So Martin, it's a, your turn now. And so I forgot to mention something at the beginning of our presentation. So the beauty of this is that even though we don't have time to show you everything and there's just too much, so you can simply go into our Genially presentation and serve it on your own because it's self-paced and it's self-explanatory. So you'll have all of the details and so on and the examples. So we invite you to explore them at your own pace afterwards. So I'm here to uh, talk to you about Edpuzzle and right after uh, about Genially. So Edpuzzle, uh, well, I was going to describe it all and everything, but I think I will let uh, the video speak, speaks for it. The video will speak for itself. So let's just watch. Want that. to create amazing video lessons in minutes? Edpuzzle is your missing piece. With Edpuzzle, you can choose from the millions of videos available from YouTube, National Geographic, TED Talks, Khan Academy, and more. You can also reuse ready to go video lessons made by other teachers or upload your very own teaching video. Then use Edpuzzle's video editor to create your perfect lesson. Embed your own questions to check your students' understanding, cut sections to show your students only the most important parts of the video, and even record voiceover so you can explain concepts in your own words. Once you've finished, you can assign it to your students in just one click and prevent skipping to make sure your students don't miss a thing. When you want to check in on your students' progress, use Edpuzzle's hassle-free analytics to get all the information you need. See who still needs to watch the video, what your students responded, and their total scores. So remember, with Edpuzzle's free platform, you can make any video your lesson. So uh, I think you heard the magic word uh, free, so uh, Diane's favorite price. <laughs> so so uh, Edpuzzle is a free tool, as you heard, and the big thing is that you can embed your own questions within your videos. Um, so uh, thanks to Edpuzzle for letting us uh, show their uh, their video this afternoon. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of suggestions for you, actually. Uh, so I'll just surf through them all. So, of course, you can create your own interactive lessons. Uh, there's a lot of teachers who started creating their own videos with uh, COVID and um, to explain things to their students and so on. If you don't know how to do to do this yet, uh, we give you uh, some pointers to get you started. And what you can do is instead of just showing those uh, those explanations and you're not sure if your students are going to watch them or how they're going to react to them, you can just embed your uh, your either more explanations within your own explanations, if that makes sense, or questions within your explanations or lessons. OK, and you will have two uh, two examples right here that you can watch afterwards on your own. So there's one for primary and for one for for secondary to see how it's done. Then afterwards, uh, if you are uh, working from a school environment, you can use it uh, in class in different ways. So uh, you can use this uh, the, the videos that are already there. So you don't need to create your own videos. Absolutely. So you can use it, uh, use videos from original authors on, on YouTube to create interactive videos to be used in class. Uh, one way we like to use these videos is for C1. So the teacher could, for example, show the video on their interactive whiteboard. And when the question pops up, then the, the students uh, have to interact together to come up uh, with a common answer or they discuss the possible answers and they need to come up with the best one uh, for, for the team. So that's one way to use that type and when we think about this type of, of tool we all we always think about using it for comprehension but we can actually use it for c1 um, you can also use it as a whole group so uh, your students just stay where they are and you have like universal uh, response from your your class 
you can also do it in uh, online. So you would be sharing uh, the, the video and then using the chat. Uh, I don't know if you were there last week, but you can use like waterfall chat. You could use universal response with people showing uh, the answer uh, on their screen where everybody shows their answer at the same time. That's one way to do it for more uh, simple matters. All right, so you have an example of how Edpuzzle can be used to prepare students for a given task, looking at functional language and behavior. Um, this is actually a one that we had prepared from uh, for another one of our uh, workshops about pair programming. So if you like what you see there and you, you're like, oh, wow, this can be done. Yes, it's called pair programming, coding together uh, in ESL. It's super cool once we get back to our normal lives maybe, but uh, you can actually see how we use Edpuzzle to show functional language and desired behavior uh, in real time. So this could have been done with the whole class or individually, all right? And if you have students who are at home or in a hybrid way, the one way you can use it, of course, is to uh, have your students watch the videos on their own, at their own pace, and answer uh, the questions, OK? So uh, it creates the added purpose, of course, uh, not just to passively watch videos that you would assign, but actually having to reflect on what they have to watch, question themselves in real time while watching, OK? So you can give those as individual assignments. And as mentioned, some of the answers are automatically corrected. So all choices and so on, that's automatically corrected. Uh, the the other ones like short answers and so on. Of course, you have to go and and correct them your yourselves, and uh, you can also have automatic feedback within uh, your your uh, quizzes if you want. I didn't want to say quizzes, not to put some confusion there. Um, so and it's a great way to collect evidence of understanding, and you'll have an example. So if you went on the social media today, you saw, you already like saw this example. Uh, but we did prepare some examples, some for primary, some for secondary of how uh, these tools can be used uh, with to, to practice, predict and infer. Uh, and those are things also that should be coming out uh, from us uh, after Christmas. But anyways, you'll have a nice preview right there of how it can be used with your students. OK. So I don't know if I'm going too fast, but I see time is flying, so I strongly invite you to go and see it on your own. There are some great examples already there done for you. Let's see if you understood the definitions of empathy. Imagine that you could put yourself in someone else's shoes for a short while. Well, you can. Empathy is the ability to... That's right. Empathy is the ability to. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss the, the tool that we're using right now, which is Genially, uh, which requires sometimes more work from, uh, from teachers. But at the same time, you might be able to find some stuff that's already done for you. Um, so Genially is a presentation tool, basically. This is what you've been watching since we uh, started, except for the uh, part that was on Google Slides. So it's an interactive presentation tool. And what you can do is that you can create interactive models for your students. Um, so let me show you uh, some, uh, some examples. So you have some templates that are already available, done by Genially and that are free. So you have games in there that are created uh, uh, and so on. And you just need to fill in with your content. OK, so all of the tinkering and all of the connections are done for you and all the drawings and the graphics and everything that's done for you. Uh, all you need to do is to like uh, put in the questions and so on and it's done. All right, so it allows you to create some games that can validate understanding in a fun and engaging way. Uh, however, this will not give your students scores like uh, we just saw with uh, the other tools, but maybe you can add in some hidden trophies or Easter eggs or special codes that your students get when they get the, the proper answer. And that's going to let you know if your student really has done the job. 
Uh, we also suggest some more tools you can check out. And of course, like I said, we don't have time to show you everything. I know I saw in the chat that a lot of people, they mentioned uh, Kahoot. You saw quizzes and there's another one called uh, Word Wall. You can check it out. It's like games with vocabulary. It's really nice. Um, so at school, how it can be done. Uh, teachers can use this type of activity in class, whether students have devices or not. So of course, if you, your students have devices, that's great. They can just play the game at, the, at their own pace. But if they have no devices, again, the teacher can project on the interactive whiteboard. Um, and then, like I said, just like with Edpuzzle, students can discuss what would their answer be and so on and think about individual answers and they could write them on paper. So there are different ways that you can adapt this uh, to, to fit your classroom setting. At the same time, if you have a group the next day that's not at school, but they stayed at home, then they can just do it online. So that's one way when we mention hybrid planning that you prepared something for your classroom and then it can also be used by the students who will stay at home. Sandra, you wanted to uh, add something? Maybe as a visual, maybe you could show an example of uh, either the elementary or secondary model. So I, I added the, the models in the, uh, in the chat. So maybe just as an example uh, to show you what it does. Yes. yes, so the models are right there in, in the middle. So you have one for the elementary. I'm going to show you uh, this one because uh, Sandra got up at six o'clock this morning to do this one in particular. Um, <laughs> so I like to reward the great work. Uh, so this is farm quiz and then um, so you see which animal lives on a farm. So you want to check out if your stu students understand the difference between farm animals and pets. So, uh, well, actually here would be the, uh, or wild animals, should I say, yeah. Wild animals versus farm animals. So of course a dog lives on a farm. And of course a panda lives on a farm. Uh-oh, no, it doesn't, okay. And and so on. So you see how it, it goes. All right, chicken. So students, of course, can, they, they have the feeling that they're playing a game, but they're actually reinvesting their vocabulary. They're checking out what they, they know. So, and this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I just said that Sandra like got up at six o'clock and I think at 6.10 she was finished. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that all of the programming was, was done. <laughs> the, the idea is that I used the template and I just replaced because the templates, what they do is you have the images, you have the transitions already pre-made, pre and you replace the, uh, the question and the right answer. So if you don't remove everything from there and you follow the template, well, it's, it's quite easy to do. It took me uh, maybe half 20 minutes, let's say, to do, yeah. So it gives you an idea of how much time you need to invest if you stick to whatever template is there. Thank you so much, Sandra. And uh, last thing, maybe it's easy to take one, copy it, and just add on for other levels. So it makes it easy to modify. Absolutely. It. Like you, you can create your copy. Well, I, I don't see the farm animals as going all the way no. to second. <laughs> but, no, but I, I know what you mean. It's like you, you could have done it in uh, like grade three and then have another kind of version for grade four. Is that what you were saying? Yes. All right. For the secondary, I might as well. Uh, so we have justification master. So this was done specifically for um, our formation distance uh, class. And this it was to check out if students could uh, uh, check out like thesis statements and, and create like the proper uh, thesis statements and so on from, from the questions. So uh, there you go. And then you just see like the animation. I didn't do any of this. So it was already there. And what I did is I added the the text in there so the content okay so let's pick a wrong answer which of these arguments changes the subject right we know that students do this uh there you go so let's try this i think oh actually it was the the right one sorry <laughs> random um there we go that's uh, the things and interesting things and ideas and so on um 
Okay, I'll have to recheck. Yeah, you got it, but I'll have to recheck the mechanics on that one. I think we used a, a prior version of this one. So note to self, let's go and check it out. Um, so that's it. I, did I have the time to mention what you could do at home with it? I don't know, but I see time is flying, so you could check it on your own time. You could also use Genially uh, to create interactive models for your uh, for your different um, products that you want your students to to create. So, for example, you want your students to uh, create uh, an email, and you don't want them to forget uh, certain aspects. So, instead of just going with five pages of uh, instructions and how to do this and that then you could have like an interactive model that can tell them uh different pointers and uh, things not to forget when they're writing this this email to whomever you want it to uh to be for okay so that's one way to create interactive models using genially so lots of tools lots of things to go and uh, and discover on your own. Like I said, uh, the, this this is what's cool about this is that it's uh, an interactive self-based uh, presentation that you can do uh, on your own. Uh, and that's it. So lots of content I know in a short time, but you can go and check it out on your own. So Nadia, I'm going to uh, give you the, the mic once again. To finish this, what I would like to show you is uh, a few little information uh, slides that we have in our presentation. This here is Campus Rissi. I don't know if you know about Campus Rissi. Please tell us that you do, uh, but um, in the chat if you do. But Quiz Campus Rissi gives you uh, online training for free on different subjects, and we created two that I think today would be valuable for what we are we're talking about. And you know, we showed you Quizlet quizzes at Puzzle. So there are tutorials and uh, and uh, pedagogical ideas for the tools. Uh, that some of the tools that we presented today. So I do suggest that you go in the plan, uh, Planification l'intégration des technologies uh, course to learn about these tools and much more. It's uh, self-paced, free, and uh, you can go back anytime and uh, that's it. So to, we do have something coming up, which is the December activities that we created for you because we know that you'll be teaching online. Well, uh, until today, you're still doing that. So uh, we've created, we were creating activities for you to use with your students for each level uh, from grade one to sec five. So it, we will be sharing those as soon as possible, uh, but it'll be uh, December 14th at the most, but It'll be before then for sure. Uh, and if you're interested in understanding how to use those activities, we will be doing a this type of webinar after work, you know, at four o'clock on December, December 14th. So we will explain how to use these activities. Uh, so you can ask questions then. So um, uh, if uh, every time you come to a rendezvous virtuel du récit, uh, which is a weekly event for us. Uh, you can earn a, partici a participation badge. You can uh, get a badge by uh, completing uh, uh, all the steps there on the slide. And uh, we will uh, share it, or you will earn a badge. This is a very important slide that tells you how you can join us and ask us your questions. So it is in your presentation at the last slide. So you can join us there. You can also follow us on Twitter. I would say that if you don't know these tools, pick one that you want to use. Don't focus on everything. So the one that you said, oh, this one, I want to start using it and start with that one. Because if when you try to do everything at this, the same time, it, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's a lot. And sometimes it's just rediscovering a tool that you already know about, right? And so thank you. Thank you, a great team. You did a wonderful job today. <laughs> I enjoyed listening to you. <laughs>